Buying your first bike is so exciting, but you are going to have to think about the kit you're going to wear too. So when Anthony Diamandis emailed me with a list of stuff he was planning on buying, asking for my advice, I thought it was a great chance to be able to take you through buying a complete head-to-toe outfit. So Sophie from Sports Bike Shop is going to help me take Anthony through that. And from this, hopefully you're going to find out how to choose the right kit for you. So here we are inside the UK's biggest motorcycle clothing retailer. It's the flagship store of Sports Bike Shop here in Boston. Uh, before we get started and start looking at some of this kit, Anthony, tell us what style you want, tell us about your bike, and tell us what budget you got. So, uh, I'll start with the bike come April, uh, Yamaha R125. Getting my provisional next month, doing my CBT. Looking forward to that. And you've bought the bike, haven't you? Oh yes, yeah, it's on order. Um, it's not, uh, not ready just yet, but... Um, so it's a lot of commuting, mainly just sort of pleasure. Yeah. Not long distance riding, mainly like urban, that sort of thing. Um, budget, <sighs> trying to keep it proportionate, between 1,000, 1,500. Just sort of uh, that sort of area. Yeah. That's a, I mean, that is a healthy budget. You, you're going to have a, a good range there. Mm. And I should say, I think you've mentioned before, aren't you? you're not planning on riding in the rain. Oh, no, no. Because that's going to affect definitely. what we choose. Sophie, you've been here, what, four or five years? Yeah, four and a half years. Yeah. Right. So what, uh, what would you say the average amount? I know it's probably not that usual to get a full head to toe coming in buying, but what would people spend? So for a learner, uh, beginning, you know, starting from either 125s or getting the first big bike license, um, we'd probably expect around five or six hundred pounds, I yeah. would say. Yeah. Everybody's budget's different though, yeah, so yeah. it can be anything. I mean, we've, we've managed to kit people out from sort of around the 300 pound mark before, um, and then all the way and up to- that's everything? That's everything, yeah, head to toe, helmet down to boots, yeah, yeah. Cool, well, I mean, we're gonna be laughing with We've this got some now. leeway. But what we wanna do in here is show you through why you might choose some stuff. For, the, for everybody watching, what you choose is probably going to be less important than why you chose it. Uh, so if we start with helmets, just have a look at some stuff and see what you chose, but also some of the recommendations we've got. Neither way. Now, you've never tried a helmet on before, have you, a motorcycle helmet? That's correct. Uh, and it fit is really important. And something actually I wanted to mention was Sports Bike Shop, you do free delivery, free, free returns even, 365 days, isn't it, after yes, you bought it? Yeah. But I do think somebody completely new to riding, it is important to get into a shop and have somebody help you see what fits. Because anecdotally, a lot of people are in helmets way too big for them. Um, so really, I think we'll start with this Scorpion XO 1400 because you'd said that was a helmet you wanted. Yep. We've got lots more to recommend you. Before we do anything, let's find out what size you are and then we can kind of do it. So if, Sophie, you can kind of get this sorted. Yeah, you know, so, I mean, some back. people like to be measured, but I think the best way really is to try on because the shapes are so different in every brand. Um, it's best to have a good try on and see what you feel comfortable in really. So, I mean, if you want to start with the medium on the middle shelf. You clear way, shape or form? So obviously undo it first. You yeah. won't get it on your head without that. <laughs> Open the visor up with the clip in the middle. Upwards. Oh, there we go. That's it. Yeah. So how is that feeling? It's very snug. It's very snug, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. See, we want it to be snug, but we don't want it to be uncomfortable. And if you get it done up, are you feel familiar with the uh, strap on there? Not in or? the slightest. No? Okay, do you want me to do it yeah, for you? Could, yeah, please. okay. So nice and tight, but not to strangle you. <laughs> right, so if you put both of your hands where your ears would be, and then try and twist your head inside that helmet. So you're not getting any major gapping down the sides. That's one of the things we look for. Mm. Um, so another check you can do is push from the back forwards, and then see if you can fit a finger up at your forehead for me. It'll Beard. just wide, if you pull them wide, it just stretches that neck roll so it doesn't pull your ears off. <laughs> I don't I think, think gonna you're going to get the small on, but it's, it's worth a try. Still a scorpion, so the fit should be very similar. <laughs> there we go. So you're in it. I'm in. <laughs> you're in. It's still spinning, but... All the visors are quite different to open. Push from the back, take the slack out. Yeah, that's it. You've that's, got a finger in there, haven't that's you? That's a bit <laughs> weird, because I couldn't with that. Obviously, different... How does it feel? Yeah. To be fair, it feels about the same as a medium. Do you reckon we should be getting him smaller mediums when we're trying on different brands? Possibly, yeah. 
Um, well, look, let's get a load in. Let's, yeah. let's go and order a load of them because we'll do it. And is it works on the kiosk here? Yes, yeah. it is. Yeah, right. on the touch screens. Yes. Okay. Well, we'll choose all your helmets, and they'll bring them all out. I feel like a um, kid on Christmas. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> So we had to get the fit sorted out first because Anthony's never tried a helmet on before. And remember, if you've been riding for donkey's years, just ordering a helmet, you know pretty well what you're up against. But I think for somebody new to it, they won't know. And too many people have a helmet that's just too big for them. While he's trying them on now, I just want to kind of say what I look for when I'm buying a helmet. And I would say now, one of the first things would be, is it ECE 2206 approved? So that's a new higher certifi certification level that goes through more rigorous tests. Uh, there's more testing done to the lid, so it's provably, potentially safer than, than other lids. But it's still re reaching a minimum requirement to be EC2206. Still plenty of 2205 helmets out there, uh, and you might find some good deals on them. That'd be the first thing I look for. Now you're gonna find polycarbonate or composite fiber helmets. You'll often find the composite fibers might be a little bit heavier, but basically it's the outer shell. Um, Composite fibre can be a little bit more durable. They tend to be the more premium helmets. And again, only in my experience, I've found that the harder outer shell tends to have a softer inner lining, which I find can be a little bit more conforming to your head. So it might be a little bit more comfy. But again, that's why it's really important to try helmets on, whether you're coming into a shop or whether you're, you're having them delivered. Now, venting's really hard. You'll find lots of vents on helmets. Watch out on some helmets where they might be fake vents. That's pretty unusual, certainly in the, the big name helmets that we've got around here. I've seen it on some helmets. The Ruroc had fake vents on the side. Um, but it's very hard to see how effective vents are gonna be when you're just in a shop. You can have a look at the holes inside the helmet if you can move the lining carefully out of the way. Don't necessarily go by the channels cut into it. Sometimes they can be effectively crumple zones in lower priced helmets. Uh, but look for the holes, look for where the air is going to come in and go out. Your chin vent that either feeds your mouth, typically feeds up over the inside of the visor to help demist it. You should have vents on the top and you might have exhaust vents which might be always open to help draw the air out. Really, you're going to have to read some reviews to find out how effective that venting can be. Now visors, some of the helmets that uh, Anthony's having a look at, they've got a drop down sunshield, uh, which is great. If it gets really sunny, low sun or whatever, you can flick that down. Not all have it, our eyes don't have it at all. How easy the visor is to remove is something you want to look at because it makes it easier for cleaning and also does it come with a pin lock. Now pin locks are effectively double glazing, it's an anti-fog insert uh, and it really does make a big difference. The cheaper helmets tend to not have a pin lock. Honestly, you're probably going to want one unless you're only riding the sunshine and you don't mind cracking your visor open. Just know, if like me, you wear glasses, uh, you're probably going to have to crack your visor open anyway because they fog up and it's very hard to put anti-fog coating on them. Talking of removing stuff, most helmets now, you can remove the lining to make it easier for cleaning them. If you're riding a lot, you might want to be able to take that out and wash it. It's supposed to be hand wash only. I tend to put it in the helmet bag and put it in the washing machine or a gentle wash, but just be careful washing it. But finally, we've got the fastener. We saw uh, Anthony had a little bit of a problem with the fastener, but to be fair, he'd never used one before. You'll typically have a double D-ring or a micro micrometric ratchet adjuster. Micrometric's really easy to use. Once you've set it, you've got some given there, but both of them give you a really good fit and they're the right fit every time. So that's what I look for, but let's find out what he's thought or what he's been trying on. Right, so Anthony, you've tried all these on. Mm -hmm. Take us through it, because the Scorpion XO1400, that was your first choice, that was what you were gonna order until we spoke and just said, right, let's get you through how to fit it. Yep. Go for them. So, um, Scorpion, uh, that's a no-go. Right. So, once I'd got moved down, it just felt quality white. It just, even though it is carbon, it felt a lot lighter and I don't know if I'd like that feel. Yeah. Um, and also, as soon as I put a slight bit of pressure on, the padding on the top seemed to be non-existent. I could feel things pressing into my head. So that was a no-go. LS2? Personal preference, just didn't like the look and styling of it. It's just very busy. Yeah. Shark, I, I liked, but I think the fit was just slightly, it, it couldn't get the right fit. I don't, I just don't think it was right for my head. Okay. AGV, as much as I You love, really wanted that. I really <laughs> wanted it to fit. Um, it just didn't fit right. Um, I think when I fit it on snugly, my mouth, I could talk clearly out of the, the gap. Yeah, it was rotating it, right. It was not central, centralised at all. I think that's important to know that you, as much as you can love a brand or a style, 
if it don't fit. It, yeah, I just can't make it work. I am not the Cinderella to the Prince Charming on the ATV. <laughs> um, the, so what uh, right, got? yeah. Sophie's very good move there from Sophie. Oh, yeah. Let's uh, like to try this 700 pound helmet. <laughs> so, what model so, was that one, Sophie? It's nice to have the comparison. That's the, <laughs> uh, that's the Shoei X SPR. So it's the newest yeah. one in the Shoei range um, at the moment. Um, it's they're basically their top race lid. So it's a 2206 lid as well. It is, yeah. 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 That's sales move of the year. You're getting on your 125, here's our race lid. Yeah. <laughs> How did that feel? Because I, when I heard you like being like, oh my God, this was... <laughs> it was snug um, and not in like a, oh, I feel like this is going to get looser over time. It just, it fitted well. It like, it just felt good. Because you said that like, the quality of every part. Yeah, felt... that's the thing. Like even like things from the visor to the vents, to the, the cushioning, yeah. to like the, the, the strap, like everything about it felt quality. Like yeah. it's thought through. Yeah. Uh, and that's some of the, we've got a like nice little sort of end to end spectrum. Yeah. Some of them down there didn't feel like. What about the HCC season? Um, back, to, back to more your budget. I think that again, the fit, it wasn't quite centered and I know it's removable and whatnot, but um, I feel like the- The breath guard. The breath guard and the visor yeah. were it's sort of just pinching. Yeah. yeah, there wasn't much room. We should say with the fit on some of them, the premium brands, don't they? So we like our eyes showy. Um, you, can, you can get the parts to do different cheek pads and different yeah. inserts. Some yes. of them will even help. So I know we did a video recently where a customer with a shark, it just wasn't right after he bought it and he'd been riding in it. So some of those brands well can get the helmet back and try and make it right for you, but you're better off getting it right in the shop, aren't you? Yeah. But you could do... We can custom fit the Arrow and Shoei definitely in store, uh, and we can look into some of the other brands for people as well if, it, if they're struggling. So, um, yeah, it, it's not something that's mega common. We don't have to do it for everybody. Um, usually people will find one that just fits nicely. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, it, it's something that we can look into. Yeah. So the Quantic, the Arrow Quantic, that was my recommendation. What did you... Um, I mean, I, I think I mentioned uh, from the first moment I picked it up, I, I thought that feels just completely different. Yeah. It felt heavier. Yeah. Um, and I, I sort of link that towards quality. That's an interesting thing you say because sometimes that's used almost as a, a pitch for some other brands. Oh, well, that's heavy, so would you like to try this? And when you hold them in your hand, you can feel the difference, can't you? But well, I think when you're riding them, yeah. I've never... I've never had a helmet. I've got all oh, that's heavy and my neck hurts. In your hand, the difference between two, three hundred grams is yeah. like, oh, I can feel that. But when it's on your head, well, you really. said about aerodynamics, didn't you, Sophie? Yeah, like... yeah. I mean, I, I find like the the sportier helmets tend to be slightly quieter. Maybe they're usually made to be a little bit lighter anyway. Um, but yeah, it's... it's how we ended up on the helmet that you own anyway. Yes, it and, is. Uh, yeah, the experience. It was a curveball this one, wasn't it? It was. It was. Yeah, but it's actually massively discounted at the minute, so it makes it within budget. Which mm. is what we try and look for for people. So what's that as well. normally? What was retail on that? Retail originally, I think the plain black was around the seven hundred pound mark. Right. To bring it down to four hundred and twenty at the moment so that's is 420. quite a yeah. drop. Yeah. So I was quite glad that that I tried it on. I would try the medium at first. Um, and even though the medium was quite nice fitting anyway, it was a bit too much wiggle room. Um, it fits good. So you're in the small now, though. Yeah, that's that's in a small. It fits well. It's snug in the right places. There's no pressure that's sort of pinpointing anywhere. There's nothing yeah. that I'm picking out. Quality feels amazing. Venting, visor, like everything just seems to tick the boxes. So you seem to have the same head shape as I do. <laughs> <laughs> well, what, should we go and have a look at some jackets? I think we're going to have to get that put to one side because I think you've made a decision. Obviously, we're going to have to look at what you've got, but uh, we're in a good position now. So. Yeah, I feel like we've narrowed that one down. Cool. Right, there was a lot to take in with the helmets, but it is a really critical decision because you know, you've really got to know it's going to be right. And I think we've got him pretty much nailed. But let's move down the body. Let's go and check out jackets, see what kind of things you can pick there. I know there's a lot to take in in this video, but if this is your first time buying biking kit, hopefully this is going to be helpful in deciding what you want to choose. So we were going pretty blind into this for a lot of the um, PRs and the companies I spoke to for recommendations. They didn't know what style Anthony likes. So we managed to narrow it down because we had a huge amount there. It's not how not somebody would normally shop because obviously they'd know roughly what they wanted. He's narrowed it down to eight jackets that he's going to try on now. But again, when I'm looking for something, this is kind of what I'd go for. And the first thing obviously would be textile or leather. Now, Anthony has no intention of riding in the rain, certainly not for his first time out on the bike, first few years maybe. So. We've not got to worry about waterproofing. 
If you want me to do something on that, we can do something on that later. Let me know in the comments below. But he's looking at textile and other stuff, but no interest in the waterproof performance of them. So fit and ease of movement really is gonna be his first thing. It is really important that you can move around in a jacket or any kind of bike kit properly. You've gotta be able to feel comfortable on the bike, not feel over tight. Obviously gotta be able to turn around and feel comfortable when you're moving about. For a lot of people buying this kind of kit, they're gonna wear it out to the pub, they might wear it while they're walking around. So he's gonna get an idea of that. Now, if he's gonna be wearing it in the summer, he's gonna be looking for vents on some of them. And what you wanna look for is whether it's got direct to body ventilation. Now, some cheaper jackets, particularly waterproof we're looking at here, might have a drop liner, and that's not necessarily just cheap jackets there. Uh, an adventure suit might have a drop liner, which is a separate waterproof membrane. Now, sometimes you'll find it in a laminated kit as well, but with direct to body ventilation, it means when you open the vent, the, the air can go straight through it. Sometimes it'll hit the membrane, it'll have to kind of move around the body before it goes out of an exhaust. The way to look for that is open it up, make sure there's no thermal liner in the way and hold it up to the light. If you can see light through it, it's direct to body venting, which might be better. Venting, think about where you're sitting on the bike, how the fairing's gonna work. Vents on the arms are actually very effective because they tend to be out in the wind. On the chest, they can be less effective, and if you've got a chest protector or even rucksack straps, that can be a problem. So just have a look and use a bit of common sense of where the venting can work. Some adventure suits, you might find vents running all the way down the arms. You can get a lot of air going in there, which does help cool you down. I mentioned that it has a drop liner. If you are looking for a waterproof kit, we won't go into it too deep here, but you'd be looking at a drop liner or a laminate. Laminate tended to be more expensive, but uh, it's come down in price a lot. Now it's down to the quality, the taping of the seams and things like that. that dictate it but if you have a look at some of our other content certainly this video about textiles up here somewhere i've done a big thing about that so check that out right cuff adjustment again for anthony it's not going to be that big a thing it's more of a problem if you're waterproofing but if you are riding in the rain you want to be able to get the cuffs of your gloves underneath the sleeves of your jacket uh, that's because while it seems odd actually the water runs down soaks your gloves get gloves full of water but make sure whatever gloves you choose are gonna work with the jacket. Even if you wear them over it, make sure that the jacket's sleeves will tighten up enough for the cuff of the glove to go over them if that's where you're gonna wear them in the, in the summer. Pockets. Personally, I prefer pockets that you put your hand in so they've got a horizontal opening because you're less worried that the stuff's gonna fall out when you're riding and you start panicking with had you done it up. But equally, Sophie was saying she likes the pockets at the side so you can tuck her hands in and keep them warm. Some jackets you'll find a front stash pocket and a hand pocket just things to consider and even silly things like have your keys with you, check they'll fit, check your phone will fit. I've had jackets and my phone won't fit in the jacket pocket. Things you need to consider. Now CE certification. Now all jackets and trousers are certified to EN 17092 and they'll currently have a rating of A, AA or AAA. The more A's, the potentially safer they are. So during that they're tested for abrasion resistance, seam strength and tear resistance. It's the whole garment, not just part of the material. If somebody says, oh, this material reaches AAA, it's what the garment reaches that makes that package. I'd never want to say to somebody, you must have the highest rating, but have a look at what's on the market because there are things that are the same price and you might like and might even be cheaper. Go for the highest rating you can afford and that feels comfortable and that just feels right to you. But the more A's, potentially, the more protection it can offer you. Airbags, so he's got a couple of airbag jackets in here. I don't reckon he's gonna go for an airbag jacket. Certainly the ones we've got this time are 120 pounds subscription. They're the inner motion airbags. Very good stuff. I'm gonna be doing more on that later, but we'll find out what he's gonna choose. And finally, and this is important, armor size. All of these jackets are gonna have elbow and shoulder armor. They might have a back protector, or if not, they'll have space for a back protector, and they might have chest protection. The armor has got to sit in the right place on your, on your limbs, and it shouldn't be able to move around, because if you do fall off and the armor just rolls around out the side, that's going to be no good. Armor comes in level one or level two. Level two offers more impact protection, but the technology in armor now is getting to the stage where some of it is offering really, really good performance. I've actually got some here. So just to give you an example, this is D3O Ghost Armor. It's really flexible, really thin. This is level one. They've actually just bringing out a level two, which is barely any thicker. Uh, and you can compare it to the different types of armor. You can get some thicker stuff here. This is still level one. So it's offering similar kind of impact protection to that. Different types of armor. Really, all you need to worry about is how comfortable is it? Uh, how does it feel when you're wearing it? And does it sit correctly on your limbs? So, once he's had a look, let's find out what he's narrowed it down to and why he's done that. Right, uh, I think, as you can probably guess, it looks like you've chosen what you want here. <laughs> yes, yeah, I think... So talk us through it. RST Roadster 3. Yeah. Um, it 
looks good. It fits good. Um, had to wiggle around with sizes. You've gone to a medium, haven't you? Yes, yeah, yes, okay. it's a bit smaller. Yeah. Um, but it's got the armor in it. It's double A yeah. um, uh, rated, and it just fits. Good. I just yeah. really love it. And I noticed that you said you weren't. You're not sure about the armor. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't look bulky, but you. Well, look. look talk us through quickly. Yeah. What what you thought about these other ones, because this was where we narrowed it down to, wasn't it? Yeah, okay, so the Oxfords. Yeah. That's the super hoodie. Yes, the super yeah. hoodie. Fit was quite, it was quite big, wasn't it? Um, it looked a bit... A little bit baggy, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, I think the armour, again... Was... It doesn't quite hold where you need it in yeah. that style, yeah. That was a bit bulky. Vice? Vice, I wanted to love this hoodie. Uh, That's a double A rated hoodie. That's... Yes, it was quite impressive. Uh, the problem was, I don't necessarily know whether it's custom back armour, but it was riding up at the yeah. back a lot. You spotted that, didn't you, Sophie, when yeah. he was wearing it? And you're going to get drafts there, aren't you? And obviously, yeah. Especially being on a sports style bike, yeah. you're yeah. going to be Good lent point. forward and it lifts at the back. Yeah. So you want that coverage at the back. Yeah. Fugue and Vince. I really like this. I couldn't think of anything. It fit well, it feels great, armour's yeah. good. The only question mark I think about that is it's it's. The certification is oh, not picked, yeah. it's that Nouveau Urbain, which was a, an old one, which kind of equates to A, which is disappointing for a leather jacket. Yeah. but um, Merlin Cody. Love the hoodie. Double A rated? Yes, double A. Um, the armour, it's the D3. The D3O armour. If I didn't know much better, I'd say that's just a normal hoodie. Yeah, it yeah. It fits well, the lining's comfy, it's warm. The armour's barely noticeable. Yeah, it's really good, that ghost stuff. It's just an all-round great hoodie. Yeah. I love that. And Risha Rich Atomic. Fits really good. It's really comfy. It looks good. I just didn't know whether it had, or it was the style I wanted to yeah. go for, personally. But I could not fault that. It looked good. It yeah. felt good. Yeah. All right, so we have a look at some gloves. Gloves sound good. Cool. Okay, so gloves, we've got a fair few out here. I'll quickly run through them. Obviously, the first thing you want to be looking at is whether you want short or long cuff. I think you've already decided you want black. <laughs> um, but yeah, short or long cuff. Obviously, you've got the longer cuff or sometimes called a gauntlet or the shorter cuff. Gauntlets might go further over the wrist. Um, we both thought you'd probably go for shorter cuffs for the style that you've been oh, building okay. up for. But if you want that extra feeling of protection, you'd normally be thinking, do you want waterproof or not? You're not interested in that. We do have a pair that are waterproof summer gloves here, but any waterproof gloves, you've got to remember they've got a membrane inside them. That might make them warmer in the summer. Yeah. So keep that in mind. Look for ventilation. The way I often, I often check for ventilation, whether it works, is try blowing through it and feel if you can feel it come oh, through. Okay. But you, you might not appreciate, Sophie might not appreciate it. <laughs> Licking and spitting all over them. Also, some gloves might have scaphoid protection. Um, you might find a hard panel on here. And the, the idea is that as you, if you fall and land, it helps the hand slide rather than grab, oh, okay. which can break the bone in there, is it? Mm. Check that the wrist restraint works. Mm -hmm. So put the gloves on, do the wrist restraint up. Don't do it so tight that you're getting pins and needles, but then try and pull the glove off. And if you can pull it off, it can pull off in a slide. So always check your wrist restraint. Okay. Um, a lot of them will have a wrist thing. Something I like to make sure is that that wrist strap doesn't pull out. They normally have a little kind of flared bit. Yeah. Uh, they didn't used to, and you put one glove on, it'll pull out, and then you're faffing about trying to get it in. Oh. That's just something that annoys me. They're all tested to either level one or level two. Most gloves are going to be level one. There's very few level two gloves about, but there are some. But everything we've got here is level one. And, and obviously, you come back to fit. Uh, so make sure the fingers are the right length so they don't pull tight into the webs of your fingers. Make sure that they're not flapping around on the ends and you might find one finger's loose, the other ones aren't. Mm -hmm. Make sure you can move your hands well. Make sure they don't feel, when you're gripping the bars, that they just feel comfortable. And make sure they fit with your jacket. Yes. So have a look, see what you like. Let's have a go. So we've got a winner. You've picked, picked some gloves. Yes, Dionysi. Uh, what are these? These are the imp Impeto. 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 Yeah. Impeto. Everything you tried was large, except the Dionysi you had to go up extra large. Yeah. Um, so yeah, they, they were extremely snug large. Got extra large. Um, I just think they look great. Um, they fit a lot nicer now. I think what skewed some of this for us, because we were thinking you were going to go for a short glove, mm. and all the companies I contacted assumed you'd be going for a short glove as well. Oh, okay. So a lot of things you've been trying on, we've eliminated 
Um, you got quite close with the held gloves, didn't you? You like those? Yeah, yeah. I think what won it over was just the, the, the bulk of it. I didn't quite like the venting as much because okay. it looked like a industrial. It was a style intake. thing. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's some really nice gloves. Mm. I threw a bit of a curveball with these Alpine Stars GP Plus yes. RB twos, which are these actually get one of the highest ratings of gloves on Motocap, which is a site worth checking out if you're, if you're looking for safety ratings and protection of stuff. But these are two hundred pounds. Yeah. Uh, and they're hundred pounds. Yes. Here yeah. at the moment, so. Great deal, great glove. Uh, and yeah, so next, let's look at jeans. Yes. I just wanted to take a second to tell you about Bennett's Motorcycle Insurance. Not only do you get five star de facto rated cover, the most common bike mods included as standard, UK based customer service and claims lines, 90 days EU cover, and even locked sheds and shipping containers recognized as garages. If you buy your insurance direct from Bennett's, so not through a comparison site, you'll also get bike social membership for free. Now it's worth 60 quid and you get access to hundreds of discounts on kit, track days, training, exclusive BSB access and much more. You even get discounts over in Sports Bike Shop. If your insurance is due soon, get a quote and see what you could save. So Anthony really wanted riding jeans and to be honest that's what I like wearing, a pair of riding jeans and a leather jacket. First choice really when you're looking at them is whether you go for lined or unlined or single layer or double layer. Typically your, your lined jeans have an aramid like a Kevlar lining separate to the outer lining. At the moment with the N1792, AAA is the top level you can achieve. In some testing we've seen lined jeans perform better than some unlined jeans. Until there are other standards to check by, we kind of top out at AAA. Don't get that confused, by the way, that lining with a mesh lining that you might find in single layer jeans. That's what's called a comfort lining. It can help keep you a bit cooler and kind of a little bit warmer if it's trapping the air in there when it's colder weather. But that's also a useful thing to have because it can help reduce the chances of skin shear injury. So in a slide, we're talking about something that wouldn't put you in hospital. It wouldn't even hold the jeans probably, but your skin can pull against the um, material in the, in the short slide and potentially cause quite nasty bruising, quite nasty damage. So I tend to go for something that's got a comfort liner. The armour type is really important in jeans, just the same. You'll find that A-rated jeans only have to have knee armour. Double A-rated jeans have to have hip armour as well. And triple A-rated jeans will have hip and knee armour. But one thing to note is the zoning on uh, all motorcycle clothing as it's uh, tested. Now on jeans, you have the different zones. So zone one would be a high impact area where knee, for instance, but only on AAA jeans is the bum counted as a zone one. Only on those jeans is the bum thought of as somewhere that you're more likely to fall on. Now I'd say you're more likely to fall on your bum when you're sliding, or it's very possible. Um, so it's just something to be aware of. And I've got to be honest, with motorcycle riding jeans, there's now such a good range available. There seems little reason not to have AAA because the prices are there. You can, you can get some very good value jeans, good fit, good style. I certainly wouldn't recommend any jeans at an A-level, personally, but it's entirely up to you. I'd be looking at AA and AAA, and I think that's probably how Anthony's gonna be narrowing some of his down. Styling, of course, you know, it, it, it's more than just how it looks. Obviously, that's important, especially with something like this, and I know Anthony wants to kind of look good in what he's, he's wearing, but you might find that slim fit jeans might hold the armor in place better, and it is really important the armor can't flap around, because if, as you fell off, the armor would roll around the side of the knee, obviously it's not gonna be doing any good. Now the armor obviously protects you against impact, but it also, while it's not tested in the abrasion testing during certification, it does form an extra abrasion resistant barrier, but also it reduces the forces on the material as you hit the ground, because it's absorbing some of that energy. So it can reduce the chance of tearing. Honestly, always leave the armor in your jeans. Find jeans that fit you well with the armor in. Don't get jeans and take them out, or I wouldn't recommend doing that. So we'll have a look what he's doing. I know he's been having some problems with this. I think he's been surprised how he couldn't get the fit quite well. He might be having to pull some more out from Sports Spot Shop, and that is the good thing here. You can call the stuff out and they'll bring it. Or if you're ordering from home, you can order what you want to try and send back for free what, what you didn't want. And actually they do returns for up to 365 days, which is pretty impressive. But let's go and have a look at see how he's getting on. Oh, these, I think we've finally found a pair that fit. Um, they work. <laughs> <La>. hey. <laughs> yeah. So to put it in a bit of context, Anthony's been through 
no idea how many pairs of jeans. And it was getting the fit. You were coming out in some stuff for the armor. I mean, the armor's typically movable, but mm. some were finding they weren't, were they? You couldn't move the armor. So it is something to look for. If the armor's not in the right place, it needs to be in the right place mm. and make sure you can move it. So these are the Risha Original 2s? Risha Original 2s, yeah. And they come in black as well. Now you had to change the sizing on these, didn't you? What, We've it? had to go up a size on okay. these, yeah. Yeah, they're yeah. a bit snug, weren't they? But they are the slim fit, so you sometimes find that with the right. slim fit in jeans anyway. The standard leg length, they only do one leg length. Uh, they're a short leg. Okay, and that's actually worth noting because not all brands do different no, leg lengths, do no. they? No, you have to look out for brands like Risha. Um, they are, I believe they're Scandinavian. They come longer leg as standard. Okay. Um, so it, it's quite often that people have to go down a leg size right. as well with those yeah, yeah. leg lengths. They look really good. Yeah, they. I think because they've got the D three O, the Ghost Armor. Yeah, it's barely noticeable. It's comfortable. Yeah, it's really good. Um, usually a thirty six fits me with a bit of wiggle room. Yeah, but because of the hip armor, I've found that going up a waist size has helped a lot. Yeah, because now I can actually feel like I can move my legs or say get get on yeah. like, without feeling like I'm like sort of cutting my circulation off. Yeah. So these are a double A jean, aren't they? Yeah. I mean, I typically, uh, personally, I only ever wear a triple A. Mm. Why don't you try them on, on those? Yeah, do you want to yeah, pull yeah. this over? I'll pop and on, yeah. Because we already eliminated some, didn't we? Like these, which are oh, only A-rated. We're yeah, like, nah. I couldn't even get my leg over. Oh, over <laughs> yeah, I know. There was some you tried on, you couldn't even get on that, were you? Uh, this is this is the first pair of jeans I'll be able to put my feet on the floor. Yeah, like yeah, cool. So, yeah, I mean, it's... It's, yeah. it's comfy, the armor's in the right place. Because you're probably going to be riding to work and then, you know, sitting at a desk all day and you want to be riding in, you exactly want to be in those. That. Yeah. The armor's in the right place. I don't feel like I'm going to lose circulation at any point soon. I can move, I can yeah. breathe and I'm, so yeah. I think you just want them in black, don't you, instead of the blue? Yeah, because again, I am part of the Adams family, so. Cool. But yeah, it's, um, I think we found a winner, eventually. Boots. Should we go and check out some boots? Let's look at boots. <laughs> So while Anthony's checking out some boots, again, I'll take you through what I'd look for in them. First off, you're going to be looking at whether you want short or high boots. Uh, short ones more like a kind of trainer or a high top style. They still protect your ankle, um, but they don't go as far up the, up the shin. You'd also be looking at whether they're waterproof. Now, again, Anthony isn't worried about that. Maybe don't buy waterproof boots if you don't need them, because again, you've got that membrane in there and it's going to make them a bit warm. It might be a bit much in summer. I tend to actually wear waterproof boots all the time. Uh, typically, if I'm wearing riding jeans, I'll be in a pair of waterproof uh, riding boots. And it doesn't bother me, but they can get a little bit sweaty. You'll find boots are either typically made of leather or microfiber, synthetic material. Main thing is you can look for the CE certification. Uh, how they wear might change. If you want that real old leather style, that might be something you want to consider. But do think about how you're going to look after them. And, and you do need to keep them clean, as with any bike kit, really. You need to check how they're going to fit with your trousers. Now, if you're wearing textile riding kit, you're probably going to want to wear a higher boot with the textiles over the top. But for for Anthony with a pair of jeans, he's probably going to want those high top style boots or even Doc Martin style boots. Uh, the jeans are going to fit really well then, but they're all things you need to think about when you're buying. And finally, you've got the CE certification. All boots have to be CE certified. Uh, and in there, you'll find four numbers that will either be one or two. Now, the first number will be indicating the boot height. A short boot will always be a one, a higher boot will typically be a level two if it's offering protection up higher. And the following ones are impact abrasion resistance, then impact cut resistance, then transverse rigidity. Now, if you imagine boots gone down, well, you've gone down, bike has fallen on top of it, and it's the crush resistance of the sole to that force, and it stops your foot being crushed by the bike on top of it. Uh, so the higher the number, if it's a two, you get better protection. But the first one, there'll always be a one. But there are plenty of high top boots that actually reach level two in everything except the height. Right, you've been through the boots. I know you had a lot of choice. You had like the Doc Martin style. Yeah. Um, there were some higher ones, some textile ones. What have you chosen? Um, gone with the Alpine Stars, the cool. Speed Force um, trainers, mainly for comfort. Yeah. They, they look good. They're something I could wear. Well, you're going to be wearing them all day at work again, aren't exactly, you? Exactly, So you want yeah. something comfy. So they're, they're cushioned. So yeah, it was, it was them. There were a lot of really nice ones, but that's given more sort of variety later down the line. Well, I think then we've got a complete head to toe. Mm. Um, you probably want to have a little thing there if you get settled up and let's find out what you bought and how much you've spent. <laughs> yeah.
Right, we genuinely have been here all day. Uh, they've logged <laughs> up and I want to say a massive thanks, Sophie. Seriously, no this problem. has been really helpful. You know, we've been shooting this, but this is what you do, isn't it? Yeah, Helping it is. This is what we do like every it. day. So yeah. it's nothing new for me, <laughs> other than the camera being around. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you've bought your stuff. This I isn't like a, one of those um, property programs where they go on all day and then don't buy. You've bought all this stuff. This so is my helmet. Sophie, can you run through what, I've got the prices here. And the, these prices, these are the prices right now today in sports bike shops. So some are a bit lower than retail prices because obviously you've done some, you know, there's, there's discounting running on different stuff all the time. Yeah. But go through what he's bought. Okay, so if we start at the bottom, we've got the Alpine Style Speed Force uh, trainers, boots, whatever you want to call them. Yeah, they're the... 189.99. Yeah, and for the jeans, we went with the Risha Original 2s and they are a slim stretch fit as well. Yeah, 199.99. Okay, the jacket is a RST Roadster. Um, Road to two, sorry. Um, obviously in black, it does come in brown as well. 275.49. You've got the Dainese Impeto gloves. 99.99. And you've got the Shark Spartan. RS. RS. <laughs> That's 351.49. Uh, so a total of, what was your budget? I think max 1500. Okay, so done it for 1,116 pound 95. So that is, a healthy budget for somebody to be spending on, isn't it? Uh, you know, and Sophie, you were saying you've, you've seen people come in head to toe for 300 quid, haven't you? Oh yeah, we, we yeah. can do it much cheaper, yeah. Um, it, obviously you've come in with an idea of what you wanted and you've pretty much bought exactly what you wanted for within your budget, haven't mm -hmm. you? I'm very happy. I'm going to set a home in my helmet. <laughs> oh, no no, bike. Fair enough. <laughs> Look, let us know in the comments what you think you'd buy as a, as a new rider. And if you want to see any more of this, or, or, you, know, you want some advice on buying it, do get in touch with us. And I, I just know I'm going to keep forgetting this. Quickly wanted to tell you about Bennett's Motorcycle Insurance because if you... Oh no, I, I looked up then. <laughs> you get UK call centres. Can I have one more go at that? You get all of that, but also if you buy direct, you... I thought, I thought something had gone wrong, sorry. You'll get the same five star de facto cover. <laughs> You're going to put all these in at the end, aren't you? Now while... Uh, so I'm just waiting until you come out. You carry on. Not only do you get the five-star de facto cover, EU cover, I just quickly want to tell you about Bennett. Metal shipping containers all locked. Okay. Hey. <laughs> I'll wait till he comes out again. You even get... Can I keep going? Okay. Hang on. That was my fault. Uh, it w you'll, you get the five-star de facto rated cover. You get... Will you be able to cut if I can keep going here? That's the kind of thing I always have to script. Right, shall I do the piece of camera of jeans now? Yeah. 